Well, greetings and salutations, test takers. This is the Series 7 Guru coming to you from my off-grid, undisclosed location studio. <laughs> Not my studio in fabulous Las Vegas. With an explication request. Uh, an investor buys 100 shares of QRS stock at 60, writes a QRS 60 call at 4, sells a QRS 60 put at 5. If QRS stock is trading at 74, on the expiration date, the investor realizes a profit of. Uh, I like this uh, phraseology about the expiration date because a lot of times they'll say expiration. And then you have to kind of figure out what that means, right? Because there are three things that can happen to option contracts. Option contracts can be traded. Option contracts can be ex uh, exercised. Option contracts can expire. And at expiration, if the contract has intrinsic value, the contract will be exercised. If at expiration, the contract has no intrinsic value, the contract will expire worthless. So again, that would be important for us to understand that in terms of maybe what's happening on what I call these time clock questions, where they say, you know, you did this, and then several weeks later at expiration, it's one of their kind of favorite kind of things to do, time clock questions. All right, well, let's do the uh, setup, and then let's answer this question. So I'm going to fire up my tea dollars out versus dollars in. I'm very uh, much a uh, advocate of making sure you have a T, you can track money, whether you want to do debit or credit or pluses or minuses, and then contract specifications. I would hope that at some point you're not struggling that this is an obligation to sell the stock at the strike price. And so uh, here I bought 100 shares at 60, and I've agreed to sell 100 shares at 60. Now, usually I say, the stock position is dominant. And so usually we say, oh, it's a stock position, it's bullish. But to be honest with you, we actually have three versions of a covered call. We have bullish covered calls where we agree to sell, uh, you know, at higher than the current market price. We have neutral covered calls where we agree to sell at the strike price. You know, so it's a 60 call, stocks at 60, the contract's at the money. That would be neutral. And then we have bearish covered calls where we actually agree to sell the stock at less than the current market price. Again, I don't think it's material to your success uh, on the test. However, I would recognize here, I don't have unlimited risk from that call contract. Uh, then we have an obligation to buy the stock at 60 for five. So it kind of looks like what I've got here is a person who is uh, short the straddle, but is smart enough to recognize that if they just short the straddle and don't have the stock, they would be exposed to unlimited risk. Right, So this is uh, whether you want to look at it as a neutral covered call with a put, or you want to look at a straddle where we have a stock to cover that short call, however you want to think about it. None of what I've dis dis discussed at this point is testable. Okay, so let's track the money. So we paid uh, at uh, 60 for the stock. We agreed to sell the stock at 60. We got four for that. We agreed to buy uh, the stock at 60. We got five for that. So that's our initial setup. Now, the trick here is to recognize that when it's trading at 74, we don't participate past the strike price. You know, our gain is capped here. Remember, we bought the stock at 60 and we agreed to sell it at 60. So that's what's going to happen. The stock is going to get called away from us. The 60 put at 74 is going to expire worthless and we're going to get to keep that money. So when we uh, net all this out, we were out of pocket 60. We brought in a 69, and so the answer to the question is that we have a nine-point or $900 profit. So I hope you found that helpful. Remember, inch by inch, your exam is a cinch. Yard by yard, your exam is hard. If you have any explication requests, send them to explication request at guruexamprep.com. Thank you. Bye-bye.